Hello, and welcome to The Art of Being Human. On the last segment, I started a whole section on dementia. We didn't get through it, so I want to review just a little bit of what I said before and continue on, and we may possibly be able to finish with it today. So let me just go back to the charts here. Uh, Alzheimer's disease accounts for 60 to 80 percent of dementia. I had mentioned that last week, and dementia can be divided into stages. So what I mentioned last week, there's stage one, there are no symptoms. You would not know you have it. Nobody else would know that you had it either. In stage two, you start to become forgetful, losing things, forgetting names, loss of short-term memory, and the person is aware of their decline and they feel ashamed of it, they feel depressed. And I want to say now, do never feel depressed or ashamed over anything that's not your fault. If this is a chronic illness that you have or some kind of a medical problem which you have and it does affect your mind, it doesn't mean that you're any less of a person and it doesn't mean it's your fault because it's not your fault. You have to learn just to understand what your body is about, what it's doing, what its problems are, and do the best you can with it and treasure the fact that you have life, which is always God-given. I know it's easy to say and hard to do, but that's the way to approach it. Don't approach it with guilt and, and, uh, and some kind of a bad feeling because you've got something that you don't want to have. Hundreds of people have things they don't want to have, but they manage. And so it, it, you can get help, and yet you actually can stay in your own home for a long time. So anyway, that's stage two. And then um, it helps, as I mentioned before, to have a structured routine. It makes it easier. Now, when you get to stage three, you start to get a cognitive decline, which is really kind of obvious to other people. Stage three, cognitive decline, and it's called mild cognitive decline. In other words, you're not doing as well mentally as you were, and the things that happen are more obvious to other people. Your work performance starts to decrease. You aren't as accurate uh, as you were before. This becomes noticeable to other people. Um, it, it, you get lost when you're driving. And uh, you can't recall names, you can't recall words. I remember the story of a dentist. And this dentist, when he became, had Alzheimer's, when he had some kind of a cognitive disorder, he was a good dentist, he had a wonderful practice. And then we had, he had one patient come to him just for a tooth cleaning, something that was very, very routine. And all of a sudden, he couldn't remember how to clean teeth. And he ended up by calling another dentist, tell me how to clean a person's teeth. Like he'd never done it before. He'd done it hundreds upon hundreds of times. He had a lot of patients. But he couldn't remember how to do it. So the other dentist, realizing that somebody was something was wrong, gave him instructions as to how to do it. And then, of course, it came back to him, and he was all right after that. But there was a temporary period of time when he had no clue what he was supposed to be doing. So that kind of thing happens in stage three. People will get lost in driving. They can't remember names. They can't remember words. They can't plan or organize. And of course, when you get to this stage, then it is noticeable to others that there is a problem. Stage four is confusion. It can be mild to moderate cognitive decline. And they forget family events their children's birthdays, they can't show up, they can't manage finances. By this time, stage four, they really can't take care of themselves. They come to a certain degree, they know how to get up and take a shower and eat their breakfast and maybe turn on television for the news or something like that. But when it starts to get a little complicated, when does my daughter have her birthday? How old is my daughter? You know, um, when am I supposed to go for appointments? I can't remember the name of someone who came to see me yesterday. Were they related to me or were they not related to me? They have some real gaps in terms of their thinking. That is stage four. They can't remember family events. Oh, was I supposed to go to a picnic? Did we have a picnic? I didn't remember to go to the picnic, you see. At that point, someone really has to take over for them because they can't manage on their own. 
So uh, they can't manage their finances. As I said before, uh, if you want to write a check and you owe $3.50, you probably shouldn't send a check for 400 You know, it, it's just that kind of thing. They just can't manage. They cannot understand the news. If they're watching the news, they don't understand what's going on in the world. But they may deny that they have a problem. And they uh, they start off and they do something that's called confabulation. I want to explain what that is. Confabulation, C-O-N-F-A-B-U-L-A-T-I-O-N. When they can't remember things, they make things up and they talk about them as if they're real. And the thing is, their talking is normal enough so it sounds real. So they're talking about the store they went to. They're talking about this person they met. They're talking about a family situation, and it's all made up. None of it is real, but they're filling up the gaps of what they don't remember, and it makes them feel more comfortable to fill up those gaps with those false stories, and they're not, they're not trying to be deceitful, but they just can't remember, so they just talk and make up stuff, and to them it seems logical. Anyone listening to them would think that they ta they're talking all right, but if you know them and if you know their situation, you know that what they're saying is not right, that it's made up. It's called confabulation. Um, they create and talk about imaginary events to fill the memory gaps. That would be a definition of it. They're depressed. They're socially withdrawn. Now you're getting to stage five, moderate cognitive decline. And then we start by calling stage five early dementia. It's at that point where we start talking about dementia. They cannot perform activities of daily living. That's the ADLs. Remember I said on the last segment, activities of daily living are, are just uh, abbreviated that way. They have no way of taking care of their hygiene. They have no way of dressing. They cannot take care of themselves. They require supervision. So they are, they are tempted and sometimes take their clothes off to run around. I had a friend of mine, we were pretty good friends, and his wife developed dementia. And uh, he had a lot of people that would come in and see him. He had appointments and people would come in and see him. And he noticed one day someone knocked at the door. They were expecting them. And his wife, who had uh, Alzheimer's, developed Alzheimer's, took off all of her clothes and went to the door and answered the door without any clothes on. And of course, uh, they realized that she mentally just was not right. And they took her away. and let the person in, but they had to be supervising her. She can't be undressing and then answering the door. That's not appropriate. This is the kind of inappropriate behavior that you get, or people wandering off. And it's too bad because she was a very nice lady. She was intelligent. She was a professional woman. And yet at the same time, you know, if a person gets dementia, it's equal opportunity. It's not one class of society that gets it and another class of society that misses it. it it can be for everybody. Okay, so they forget addresses, they forget phone numbers, they forget the names of close relatives, and it, it would be embarrassing. Now, what is my brother's name? You know, they've been known, they've known their brother all their life, they've talked with him, and then they may not remember who he is. Or they don't they may recognize him, but they can't remember what his name is. You know, it gets to be embarrassing. They become disoriented in terms of time and space. Where am I? Where am I going? You know, they'd be walking around town. They want to go one place, and then they lose their orientation. They have no place. They have no way of knowing where it is they want to go. They feel frustrated, and they re withdraw. And there's a lot of self-absorption. Now, self-absorption is when you are talking about yourself and thinking about yourself. You're just attuned to who you are and how you're behaving and how you feel and what's going on. And that's perfectly normal to a certain degree. But what happens is the fact they are so self-absorbed, I think because they know that they're failing and they're worried about it. And they're trying to put things together to make sense so that they won't fail. So it becomes like a self-absorbed uh, exercise of analyzing themselves, trying to find out who they are, what 
what they're like, what's wrong with them, how can they fix it, and they have a little less ability to know that, that this is not normal, but they can't figure it out, and that's too bad. I feel sorry for them because it becomes a horrible thing to go through. They have a knowledge about themselves but not enough for them to understand what's going on in their lives and to fix it. Stage six, it's moderate to severe cognitive decline. And at this point, we're talking about middle dementia. They can't recall major life events. Like for example, do you remember the time that you went to your daughter's wedding? No, they don't remember it at all. Do you remember things that happened to you when you graduated from college with your PhD? No, no memory of that. And it gets to be kind of sad because they don't remember the things that happened to them that were important things that kind of defined who they were and what they did. It's a great, great loss. It's a very sad disease. But that's middle dementia. They can't name their spouse. They have no, no idea of what the name of their wife or their husband is. They're disoriented to their surroundings. They don't know where they are necessarily. They may be in a nursing home. I've seen people in nursing homes who think that they went back to the house that they lived in as a child. And they're convinced of it. No, I'm not in the latest house, but I went back and, I, and we grew up in a certain house, and this is where I am now. They're all mixed up in terms of where they are. In a sense, I think maybe that's a little bit of a blessing because maybe it makes the grief of loss of things that were important to them less important if they can't remember it. You know, what do you grieve? You grieve your losses. What if you don't know what you lost because you can't remember it? Do you still grieve? Well, probably not. If you can't remember it, if you can't know that something was important, you probably won't be grieving over it. So in a sense, it's a little bit of a blessing when they get to the point where they're bad enough that they can't remember what it is they lost, and then they don't have such a grief process. I think that may be a help to them in a sense. Uh, can't name their spouse, disoriented, and they don't know the day, the season, of, or the year. You know, when you go into a nursing home, one of the first things you see, what you're likely to see, is a big sign that says, today is Thursday, November 23rd, 19. Uh, 86 or something. I'm making up the year. I'm thinking about times I've been in the nursing homes in the year. I realize, of course, this is 2014. But the, what is that? What, what the purpose is is when people, the the clients, the people who are living there, walk by. If they see that, it helps them to orient to time and space. Oh, this is Thursday. This is the day that we have macaroni and cheese for lunch. You know, this is November. Well, it's not summer anymore, is it? We're getting closer to Christmas. And this is the year 1985 or 2014 or whatever the year is. It just helps them to be oriented. And part of, of dealing with people who are getting dementia is to make things so structured that it's natural to them. It comforts them. It's something they can rely upon. How many times do I look at a calendar during the day? Uh, because I never can remember the date. When we get toward the middle of the month, is it the 23rd or the 25th? And I'm rechecking. Now I know the date and the year and the time and all of that. But even I, just in terms of a busy schedule, sometimes recheck the dates. You know, It's not unusual for people to forget the dates. They get so busy and they get so distracted. But with people who have dementia, people who are in nursing homes, it's important for them to just be structured enough and have reminders of what reality is. They'll have a huge clock. 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, they want to get them instant, they want to get them oriented to present time and space because that helps them to orient themselves to the real world. 
you know, it, does it do them any harm to think they're in 1914 and World War II is going on? Well, maybe not, not it doesn't hurt them any, but it would be better for them health-wise to get them to understand where they are and not just lose it all, to keep their memory intact as much as they can. Okay, going down from here. Um, Stage six, moderate to severe cognitive decline, middle dementia, can't recall major life events. I, I know I've gone over that, but I just want to review it. Can't name their spouse, disorientation to their surrounding, and not knowing the day, the time, the year. You want to keep them in that space as long as you can. It's not going to help them in the long run, but it may make them feel more comfortable as they're going through the process. At this point, they cannot manage their activities of daily life. The ADLs I talked about earlier, they're incontinent. A lot of them can't sleep. They mix up day and night. They will become wanderers, agitated, aggressive, obsessive, and it worsens in the late afternoon and evening, and that process is called sundowning when they get worse in the late afternoon. There's loss of language skills. They need institutional care. A lot of them no longer talk. They're not able to talk. Stage seven. These, this is a severe cognitive decline, and it's called late dementia. They cannot recognize their families, and they're immobile. They're in bed. Their families are so distracted and so upset because they'll go up, especially the children. Hi, Graham, remember me? No, they don't. They don't have any memory. Their muscles become rigid. They have repetitive movements of their muscles. They have a depressed immune system. Have you ever wondered why so many elderly people get, uh, get pneumonia and other illnesses and die from the effects of pneumonia? If an elderly person who's in a hospital gets pneumonia, this is a serious thing. They may not pull out. A lot of, a lot of elderly people die. But you get that because the immune system is now not functioning. So they have no immune system. Um, they get pneumonia. The urinary, the urinary tract infections, pressure ulcers, appetite, the appetite decreases, they don't eat as well. The speech may be very impaired, they may not be able to talk at all. They're incontinent, they're unaware of their surroundings, they have no idea where they are, but if they're that, if they're that, that demented, they don't think about it either. They do not recognize their family. And when you start getting all of this, you start getting death following. Death will follow due to infections, sepsis. Sepsis is infection of the blood, very dangerous. Aspiration, aspiration happens when a person is eating, they don't swallow right, and instead of going into the stomach, some of the food ends up in the lungs, and that by itself can give a type of pneumonia. That's why pneumonia and keeping a person clear of pneumonia is so important. The symptoms of the different types of dementia um, are common. But the causes, the etiology, and when I'm talking about etiology, I'm talking about causes of the types of dementia are different. Dementia can be due to the following factors. You can have dementia to the, due to Alzheimer's. That would be the most common. Vascular dementia is due to the, something being wrong with the blood vessels and the blood flow in the brain. Dementia due to HIV, HIV will lead into full-blown AIDS. It comes before full-blown AIDS. Dementia due to head trauma, dementia due to Parkinson's disease, dementia due to Huntington's disease, dementia due to Pick's disease. We don't hear much about it, but it does exist. Dementia due to Creutzfeldt jacob disease. I want to mention Creutzfeldt's. Now, the dementia is a part of the symptoms of Creutzfeldt's, but what's going to happen is if a person gets dementia from that illness, they will pass on within one year. Remember I mentioned before, there is one illness, neurological illness, in which dementia is a part of the symptoms, but when the person gets it, they don't usually live longer than one year. It's a very fast-progressing illness. 
uh, uh, dementia due to other medical conditions. You can get dementia due to substance in, uh, substance abuse, and you can get it from other multiple uh, causes. So that's those are not related necessarily to Alzheimer's. Okay, symptoms of uh, and talking about dementia, Alzheimer's type. The symptoms are described in the seven stages. I've gone through seven stages, and those stages are what the Alzheimer's patients go through. The onset for Alzheimer's disease is slow, but it's progressive, and the person deteriorates, but it starts off slowly, and the person may be in a certain stage and stay there for a long time before they go on to the next stage, and then they'll go on to the next stage and stay there for a long time before they go on to the following stage. Early onset Alzheimer's starts usually at about age 65 or younger. Late will is after age 65, and you have CAT scans and MRIs that show the degeneration of the brain, the ventricles enlarge, you know, the convolutions of the brain, they widen, and you have plaques that form in the, in the brain, and the nerve cells get tied up with those plaques, amyloid plaques, they're called, and so the brain no longer functions. That's the cause of Alzheimer's, but there's no known uh, definite cure, and there's no known definite cause. We know some things that occur, but you don't know what one thing leads to another. You know, what comes first, the plaques or the neurons that being damaged? There's just so much more to learn about it. No known cause. Now, um, I'm going to, I think I'll close it here because I, I want to start something, but I only have just a little time left, and I don't want to get started on something and not be able to finish it. But I want to get into the problems with neurotransmitters and what happens if you don't have enough neurotransmitters and how they increase the probability that a person would get some form of dementia. That's kind of like a new section, so we won't finish this uh, section on dementia until the last segment. So if you have any questions, Questions or you want to contact me, email me here at the studio. That is the way to reach me, and then I will get back to you. So we'll close it here. Please join me next time.